Okay, so let's take a look at question number five here and how to do this, uh, this problem in terms of a uh, probability question. So what we're told here is that we have a, um, a league where we have some players and the mean score of the, of the players are 1232 and the deviation, the standard deviation is 379. Okay, so right off the bat with those two numbers, we'll just make sure we understand what we're looking at here. So um, we're going to assume a normal distribution. So we have a, a normal uh, distribution curve. We know the mean is situated in the middle, so it's 1232. And we know our standard deviation is 379. So right off the bat, that's how we would want to draw, set up this question. Um, the first part of the problem says Natasha has a rating of at least 1350. So what we're looking at here is the percent, or in this case, what this question is, is asking for is the probability. So I think we probably should just write down here that probability okay, is equal to percent because it's the, it's the proportion that is covered by the, the standard deviation curve. So this question is a little, maybe just a little bit different in terms of the, the terminology uh, that they use because um, I don't think it really introduced probability in, in, in any of the other questions, but we do understand that to be the percent covered by a normal distribution curve. So we want to know what's the probability that Natasha has a rating of at least 1350. So we know 1350 is going to be above the mean. And saying that she has a rating of at least 1350 implies that it could be 1350 or greater. So I'll just put that in another color here. So our cutoff here is 1350. So we're asking for the probability that that person um, score is above 13, at least 1350 or above. So anything here that we see in the green um, shaded area. So to do that is, is a fairly straightforward question. Um, we are just going to use our norm CDF function. Okay, and we know the, the lower bound here is going to be 1350. The upper bound is essentially infinity. So we mark that as 10 to the 99, one times 10 to the 99. We know our mean is 1232 and 379 is our standard deviation. So if we plug all that into our calculator, we'll find that we get 3778 to four decimal places, okay, or 37.78%. That is the chance that that person will have a rating of at least 1350 or better. There's a 37.78% chance. So then the second question here says um, that both Natasha and Boris have a rating of at least <clears throat> 1350. So this is a probability question actually that was not, I don't think was really covered um, in any of the course material, but I'll just do it here for completeness. Um, what we're looking at here is the probability of Natasha, I'll just probably Natasha and the probability of Boris um, having at least 1350. So there's a rule in probability where we're when we're combining two events and we want to know what is the probability of um, them both being true at the same time. Um, it's actually just the multiplication of the individual probabilities. So the probability of Natasha having um, a 1350 score is just 0.3778. And we're going to multiply by that, which is the probability of Boris having that same score. And because these are essentially, they're independent, they're two different people, they're independent of each other, the probability of that occurring is identical um, to the first one. So we just actually square or multiply those two probabilities together. And to get that answer, we will find that there is a 0 0.1427, okay, or a 14.27% chance that both of them will have a score of 1350. So if you think about it, it means that I have to have two people that have, looks like a fairly high score, um, and they both have to have it. So the odds of that, you would think, would be 
lower than one person having having that score by themselves. So the 14.27% would make sense. Um, the hardest question here might be um, C, because we have to now think about at least one of them having a rating of 1350. So this is a little bit different. And again, um, this is a question, it's more of a probability question, um, which really hasn't been covered, but I'll kind of work through the solution here just for completeness. So at least one person means that um, either Natasha or Boris, or possibly both of them, um, at the same time can have a rating of 1350. So the way we actually have to kind of look at this, the way that would make sense logically, is we have to do something what's called a decision tree. And we look at it in terms of each event happening for each person. So I'm just going to do a little tree sketch here and then see um, how that works out. So the first person, um, the probability of them getting a 1350 score. Okay, so I'm just going to write down P for probability and 1350 is our, is our score. We know there's a certain percentage of that happening and we actually know that it's 37.78%. But that first person also has a probability of not getting that score. Okay, so I'm gonna indicate this by using a little squiggly line and we're gonna go P1350. This means not 1350. So what is the probability of that person not having a score of 1350? Okay, so the first person is gonna be either Natasha or Boris in this case. So I'm just gonna put this down in a different color here. So we do know from the calculation that the probability of having a 1350 score, whoops, here, that's a little bit too big, is, the color back here is 0.3778. That's the probability of them getting the score. So the question we need to ask is, what's the probability of not having that score? So not having that score is essentially subtracting 100% or the value of 1 minus 0.3778. Okay, and so their probability of not getting that score is 6222. So there's about a 62% chance of not having that score. Okay, so for that's just for the first person. So now the problem is that there's a second person here. So we're going to write down a second person here. And... What is the chance of the second person being picked um, after the first person has been picked that they get a score of 1350 also, okay? But then the second person being picked also has the probability of not having the score um, of 1350. So there's, there's two cases that follow from the first case. First person could be, um, have the score, but then we have to look at what's the possibility for the second person um, if that first person had that, that score here. So again, our scores here, the probability of getting 1350 for the second person, it's, remember, they're independent of each other. Okay, so there it's still the same 37.78, and the probability of not getting that score is 0.6222. Okay, but now there's one other thing that we have to look at here is suppose the first person never got the score, but then we pick the second person because remember the question is saying at least one of them has to have a, a 1350 rating. So there's a, there is a situation where the first person may not have the score, but the second person does have the score, okay? And then there's also the situation where if the first person doesn't have the score and the second person doesn't have the score. So we sort of have to list all the possibilities here. Okay, and then we're just gonna write down our probabilities. Again, it's 0.3778 and 0.6222 approximately there. Okay, to have... Um, 62% chance of them not having the score also. So now we have to look at what's called branches here. So 
from the first person, let's say that they get a score of 1350. So we start here and then we can draw a branch down. And then we can also draw a branch from them getting the 1350 to the second person not having 1350. And then let's say that the first person didn't get a 1350, so that's the not case. But the second person got a 1350, and then there's the last case here where both of them don't get a 1350. So now to, to figure this, all the possibilities out here, because we want, remember, the key question thing is saying here, at least one of them has a rating. So one, that means one or more. So there's actually, there's, there's a few cases here that'll work. There is the first case here where um, the first person has 1350 and the second person has 1350. Both of them together um, have the required score and it does meet the definition of at least one of them having the score. So this is the probability, so we'll just write down here, the probability of at least one. Okay, that's how I'm gonna express this here. And when we are working through the branches here, we, we multiply going down the legs, so down the two, the two possibilities, and then we have to sum all the possibilities up. So I'll write it out here um, fully so that we see it. So the probability of at least one having the rating, okay, well the first case is where both of them have the rating. So it's going to be 0 0.3778 times 0.3778. So that meets the criteria that both of them have the rating. But there is the other case here where the first person has the rating, but the second person doesn't have the rating. Okay, because that meets the definition. So we're going to have to actually add the two probability, the two, um, the compound probability together, but we're gonna add it to the first one. Okay, so we take the product of the two and then we add it to the first one there. And then there's, there's actually a third branch here where the first person um, or doesn't have the requisite score, but the second person does. And so there is another branch that works, which is 0 0.6222 times 0 0.3778. So, and then if we look at the fourth case where the first person doesn't have the percent and then the second person doesn't have the percent, well, that doesn't meet the criteria of at least one of them having the percentage. So we take this into our calculator and we sum, we multiply the, the, the three terms out and then we sum them all together, okay? And what we will find is that this whole mess, this calculation here is point, equal to 0.6128 or 61.28% chance that at least one of them will have that rating, okay? So again, I'm just gonna leave this here for completeness, but this is the way that you'd have to understand this question. And this type of probability question is actually a little bit, it's outside the scope of what the questions are. So you won't really see this on a, on a test or a quiz um, in this course, but I'm just gonna leave it here for um, completeness and to, to show you that that is how that, this probability question works. Okay.